here we have a Toyota 2E engine, and today we're going to be adjusting the carburetor on this. Uh, there's unfortunately not a lot of information about how to adjust these carburetors, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to shed some light on these. So having a look at the manual, we are running the K-Type carburetor. So this is the later model twin Venturi type, not the sliding type that you see on some of the earlier cars. And this is just a, a basic overview of the settings. However, I'll show you how to adjust all these. So I'll remove the air filter. So now that we've got our air filter assembly out of the way, this red hose here needs to be plugged. So I've just stuffed something in the end of that just to uh, stop vacuum leaking in there. This enables us to run the engine with this uh, cover completely removed. This hose here and this hose here, they can remain open to atmosphere because they are just vents. Here we have our primary Venturi. This is our choke flap operated by this choke actuator here. Here's our secondary Venturi. Here we have our fast idle cam breaker diaphragms. And they are a two-stage setup, which are controlled from these vacuum switching valves, which are thermally controlled valves, which will pull this diaphragm out in stages depending on the temperature of the coolant. This big diaphragm here is driving our secondary butterfly, so this is completely vacuum operated, whilst the primary is operated with the mechanical linkage. On the other side of the carburetor, we have our choke breaker diaphragm, which is this piece here, and it has this uh, linkage that goes over to the other side of this choke flap. And when the engine starts, there's a little bit of a delay before this gets vacuum, and will actually crack this valve open to stop the engine from running overly rich and coughing and spluttering. So if the engine is fully warmed up, this choke valve will be open like this. If we ever look down in there, you can see whenever I open up the throttle, you can see a spray of fuel come out of that little wee uh, nozzle there. And that is a result of this accelerator pump. So we can verify that is working. So over on the side of the carburetor, and not all carburetors have this, but this one does, we have this sight glass, and this is showing us inside the fuel bowl. And the fuel level needs to be between the upper and lower limit on that metal plate covering that window. And this here is our dash pot. And essentially this is responsible for a control slowdown of the engine. So when the throttle is shut, this will dampen and slowly retract back in closing the throttle gently, and this is just to re reduce emissions and also reduce backfiring. So once we can confirm that our fuel float level is correct, looking through that sight glass, and we can rule out any engine troubles, like ignition timing is correct and also the valve clearance is correct, we can have a look at this carburetor, make sure there's no vacuum leaks. Now the first thing I want to adjust, seeing as this is a cold engine, if we open up this throttle, this choke flap will snap shut. We have these three retaining screws on this choke, and we can actually clock this either left or right, depending on what we want. Okay, so I've just loosened these three screws here, and now we can rotate this choke assembly. So over here, if we open the throttle a little bit and close it, you can see on a stone cold engine, this choke is wide open, so there's going to be no effect. If we clock this over to the other side, and I open up the throttle, you'll see that snaps shut. But with this so far over to the rich position, it's going to take a very high engine temperature for this to start opening. And this can lead to rough running and whatnot, very poor fuel economy. So we want to find a happy medium. We'll start from the center. If we open it up, there's not very much pressure on that diaphragm, but it is enough to keep it closed. And if we have a look underneath here, this choke valve is actually connected to our fast idle cam. Now if you have a look, it's a bit hard to film, a bit hard to see, but that green cam with the white paint dot on it, which is right by that spring there, this is going to eff uh, effectively run on this plastic block, which you can see connected to the accelerator linkage. And the further up the cam goes, the further out it pushes this accelerator out, and it will effectively speed the engine up when it's cold. And when the engine is at operating temperature, this choke breaker diaphragm, We'll pull this back in. Okay, so now that we're happy with the position of this, we can lock up these three screws. Uh, this choke flap does close, and this is cold, uh, but it's not so much where the um, choke flap will remain shut when the engine comes up to operating temperature and cause rough running. So we're pretty happy with that. So the next step, we're going to run the engine up to operating temperature, and then we're going to do a few other adjustments. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so with the engine fully warmed up, we've gone ahead and disconnected the diaphragm, so both halves. We've just plugged these vacuum lines with screws. Next step is to, if we zoom in here, put this choke breaker cam on this third step. So as you can see, that's one step. That's two steps. And that there's three steps. Now we're going to start the engine and there's a screw right under here. That one there that we're going to adjust. And that is right at the back underneath the throttle linkage. We're going to adjust this until we get to a speed of 1600 RPM. Okay, so the next job, we are going to remove this line here. We're going to set up this dash pot speed. So this needs to be set with this line removed and plugged at 2000 RPM. So I've gone ahead and plugged that hose there so there's no vacuum leak. And to adjust the speed, you wind this screw here in a route. Okay, so there's a few other adjustments we can make, although this car doesn't actually require them, but we'll just run over them quickly anyway. The simple one is the base idle speed, which is set by the screw down here, and this is just obviously the idle speed when the engine is at operating temperature. Unlike before when we set the fast idle speed when the engine is cold, this one quite simply sets the engine idle speed when the engine is warm, and it should be about 800 to 900 RPM. If we have a look down here, you can see this resistant screw. Toyota obviously doesn't want people tampering with this, but nonetheless, we're going to do that anyway. You can actually get a flathead in and force this around, and it will actually rotate that brass screw going into the carburetor. And all this does is this sets the mixture at which the engine runs at when it is idling. So here we have another carburetor, and it has the same style screw where it's got this metal shroud over it. All you need to do is just pop a screwdriver in there and then you can rotate the whole thing like so. Quite easy. So the idea behind these screws is if you screw them in, it will lean the mixture out. And if you screw it out, it will richen the mixture. And if for whatever reason this goes out of adjustment or if it's been pulled apart or whatever, I reckon the best way to set these is five turns out. Start the car and get it up to operating temperature, a nice smooth idle. And then you start screwing this in and then the RPMs will start to ever so slightly drop. So as soon as you hit that point, you stop there, and then you back it off a bit, and pay close attention to the exhaust note, you'll hear a little bit of missing. And you just keep screwing it out, just a little bit, quarter at a time, until it smooths out to a nice smooth idle, where the engine is just consistent and very stable, and then probably just leave it there. So it's very rare that you need to adjust this. So on this carburetor, seeing as it's up on the bench here, it's actually quite a lot easier to see how this cam works. You can see that plastic block, and if we put that on its highest position there, and you can see how each step will close the throttle ever so slightly. So if we want to adjust the fast idle, again you put it on the third step, which is there. And then if we go around behind this linkage there, you can see that screw right in there. That is the one that you want to adjust. So having a look at this side of the carburetor, we can undo these two uh, screws here. And we have access to the primary and secondary jet. This one down here is the secondary. And this one over here, which is the smaller one, is the primary. Here we have our PTC heater. And this is only fitted to some models of carburetors. Not all of them have this. But for those that do, this is basically responsible for keeping the carburetor from icing up. And there's an electrical connector with one pin in there and battery voltage is applied there and it just heats up that surrounding area. So we can just take an ohm meter to check that and go between the carburetor body and that wire, and it should be between about two to four ohms. Uh, this carburetor doesn't have one fitted, but there would be a solenoid here for the idle cut. So when you turn your car off, this cuts the idle circuit to stop any fuel from entering the uh, engine and it will stop any chance of running on uh, so if you're having trouble with the car idling, or the car will refuse to idle, uh, check that this solenoid is energising. Uh, you should be able to hear it click when you apply voltage to it. And 
finally over here again this is missing off this carburetor but that choke actuator needs to have a resistance between the ground of the carburetor and the red wire coming out of it and that will be heated by battery voltage again when the car is running and as that heats up the bimetallic spring that will relieve tension on this arm and open up the choke flap. So on the side of our carburetor we have the sight glass and if the fuel level is either too high or too low we have to go ahead and remove these screws here around the top of the carburetor. We have to disconnect the linkage from this green pivot point here which is on the choke. Then we have to undo these screws, pull this aluminium assembly away, undo the screw here and then we can pull the top of the carburetor off. We just have to be careful we don't tear the gasket. Underneath that gasket there's also a little weight and a check ball for the accelerator pump that needs to go back together properly or otherwise that won't work. The uh, float level is set simply by bending the tab on the float where it meets the needle valve and you can bend it up or down depending on what way you want to go until you get the desired fuel level. With the carburetor disassembled uh, it's a good opportunity to get in there with some carburetor cleaner clean out the float bowl, make sure there's no residue or sediment in the bottom. Anything like that can get sucked into the jets and that can cause havoc with these things. Even if the carburetor is still assembled and you don't plan on opening it up, just get in with the carburetor cleaner and spray all around this area, get all this varnish off, and that does improve things. Uh, I've never really found these carburetors clog up on their own. The uh, only real issues I've found with these carburetors are just cold start performance. And they run fine when they're warm for the most part, but if they're idling rough or whatnot, typically a good cleaning will help out. With the uh, cold start performance issues, generally it's all to do with the choke and the fast idle and whatnot, so just simply adjusting that, like I've shown in this video, can actually help these carburetors out and make the car run a lot smoother when it's cold. So I hope this video is helpful to people out there. Thanks for watching.